Coming up, the evil twin is back. Look who's back! How is the tropical island? A banana gets eaten. I branch out. And morning exercise, aka pushing a dead classic car. Aloha and welcome to M539 Restorations, a channel known for saving neglected and very broken BMWs. Well, not anymore. No mas amigos, time to explore the car world and grab it by the bonnet. I want something reliable, something that doesn't constantly leak oil. What is that? And no, we don't. Look who's back. How is the tropical island? Nice and warm. Not get rid of it. Not broken enough. No. Then I quit. Good. You're useless anyway. I'll show you useless. Where was I? Ah, yes. Reliability. Say hello to my newest project. I give you my new Nissan GTR. Ah, sh it's just another broken BMW that's been abandoned for the last 25 years. How? Must have pressed on the wrong button. But it's here. Might as well save it. Might as well save it. What do we have? What kind of flavor of BMW is this? Old and dingy. Heading down the right path. That's reassuring. Can he pass the Grand Theft Auto test? Well, <coughs> barely. Kind of claustrophobic in here, and I'm three inches and 380 feet tall. No key, didn't run in over two decades. All right, I approve. It is broken enough. Time to cheese it out of here before that genius makes me push this hunk of metal. Nah. Say hola to Project Castellon, the Genesis, the original 3 Series, the E21 and the top of the line model 323i. Admittedly, I didn't look for this model specifically. One late evening before going to bed, I stumbled upon this little gem freshly listed for sale in, as the project name suggests, Castellon, Spain. I messaged the seller early in the morning and by lunchtime I did the right thing and sent the deposit for a car that's been off the road for the last 25 years. The following day a good friend of mine from Alicante, Charoc, went there with his old school classic Mercedes tow truck to pick it up and store it with him before it was shipped to me in Germany. The seller claimed the car didn't have any rust but my friend noted rust in the corner of the rear windows but other than that, it is solid. Massive thanks to Sharok for doing the legwork and helping me and frankly all of us to rescue this beauty. We are jumping back into action on the delivery day. Good morning. It is way too early o'clock, but it doesn't matter because look who's here. The driver, he came from Alicante to Frankfurt in like a day. He left Spain, I think, yesterday. And the guy arrived late last night. I don't want to wake him because he's having a well-deserved sleep. But another two delicious BMW is here. Just look at it. All right, here's the deal. We have a problem. The car doesn't have keys. It had the keys. You can see them on the pictures. But somewhere between my friend going to pick it up in Castellón and then transporting car back to Alicante, the keys were lost. Not sure how, why, where, but the car doesn't have keys, so we cannot steer it because the steering lock is engaged. And normally this wouldn't be a big issue because you can just take the chassis number, go directly to BMW, prove that you own the car, and they're gonna sell you exact key for that car for like 56 euros. But this is an old car, so Pretty much everything for it is discontinued. Well, those small bits and stuff. The specific key that I need is discontinued. It's no longer available for me and W. It's gonna get interesting. I'm also secretly hoping that the key is somewhere in the car, maybe dropped it or whatever, but they were not able to find it when they, when they were loading the car in Alicante. Also, look at that car in the front. Ferrari, Lamborghini. It's not, it's McLaren MP4-12C. It is a very, very cool car. I want one of those as well. Maybe it's for sale. I give you 2,000 euros. Yeah, right. I just, I cannot begin to describe you how excited I am for this car. I mean, I've never, this car is older than I am. I'm gonna have breakfast while we're waiting. 
To be very honest with you, I don't like getting up early in the morning at all. And I can sleep through a war, but if the reason to wake up early is broken BMW, I'll be there. Count me in. Also, what is that thing on the back? Not sure, it looks cool. It's a Dodge. Ah, it just... Let's have a look. Very nice Ferrari at the front. And we have a Dodge in the back. Just look at this thing. We have original Spanish plates. V stands for Valencia. Beautiful. That stain on the car until it's registered in Germany. Four beautiful headlamps. Perfect size kidney grills. Chrome bumper. That's gonna polish nicely. Rock chips. So here's the thing. I don't know if the paint is original and I have a paint measuring device. So you're gonna check that in a bit, but I just wanna see the state of the paint. So far, not too good. That's the bit of rust. Oh, the guy's up. Good morning. Hello. How are you? Hey. Good? You're yeah. quick, my friend. Very quick. Sorry, my English is not perfect. They lost the keys in Spain, so I'm secretly hoping that maybe it's somewhere inside. Look at this beautiful interior. Oh, please be in here. Yeah, the ignition lock. There's nothing there. I still, oh, there's the mirror that's missing. The door panel is here. That's is good. It doesn't appear to be here. It's not in the pocket. Lava ox. That doesn't look that interesting. 93,000 kilometers. I think that's original. We're gonna talk about that in a bit. Oh yeah, key is definitely not here. Amigo. Yeah. Can you back it up there like that? Uh, yeah, I like that. Cause this is locked. Ah, this side is worse. That's really bad, there's a hole there. Oh. That doesn't work. Yeah, that's not the key. Nothing interesting there. Look at that. That is beautiful and original. Male BBS. These puppies are staying. Clever? Clever. Is that what it says? Yes. Look at the state of the exhaust. It's mint. Not even a tiny speck of rust there. Oh man, just look at the state of the bottom. For now, I don't see any rust at all. How do you open this thing? It's, it opens on the front, doesn't it? There we are. So I need to see if I can disconnect the steering shaft. Just, does that stay? It will. So I can see the steering shaft there. So I'm gonna go get some tools and see if I can push that down and disconnect it. That way we can steer the wheels. Ah. Now, that won't work. Oops. Dropped it. Ooh, the Dodge thing is running. That thing actually sounds sweet. There is no way that that's going to work because I need to counter hold the bolt so I can disconnect it on the steering rack more easily. There's trucks every three seconds. Ah, uh, yeah, I need two hands. How am I going to do this? Oh, there you go. Now you're in business. This car has a steering rack. So the handling of this car, it's just gonna be biblical. McPherson struts, independent suspension. Come on, think I'm gonna need a pry bar. Pry bar, pry bar cannot fit. Okay, I get a hammer. So how's your morning going so far? Problem is it's rusted on. Yeah, yeah. Spark plug fell out. That's interesting. I somehow managed to <laughs> hammer out the spark plug. That is always a good sign. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, Finally. Oh, Congratulations. This is what I've done. I had to beat off the column of the steering rack. Something that I really didn't want to do because I left a lot of marks on the column. But at this point, there's no way I can push it into the yard without steering. Normally I would put a jack over there but nothing is flat here. There's no way you can do it with the jack. So now hopefully we can just move with our hands wheels and we can get it in. Is that neutral? Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Does it have brakes or no? No brakes. I barely fit in this thing. Okay, good, it's working, yeah. I can't get out. Just... <laughs> All right, we are down. Fixing this car is going to be interesting to say the least. Oh, we have faded paint here. No, no, push by the wheels, by the wheels. 
much easier. Ah, yeah, this is power steering, human steering. Can I push this car on my own? Sure can. Ah, who needs a combustion engine when you have human strength? Beautiful morning to push a classy BMW. This color was only, at least from what I found online, available in 1980, so only this model here, which is kind of cool. It's called olive green. I'm gonna go cough up my lung, pay the guy, and then we'll be back and take a proper look of this thing. But you're here now, my third delicious friend. After 26 years, someone's gonna try and rescue you. So we're gonna walk past that Bugatti over there and look at this beautiful thing. Look how beautiful it is. No idea what model it is, it's Dodge pickup of some sort, but look at the interior of this thing. Stunning. And, Look at that, beautiful. Look at the miles. Not sure if they're original, but 32,000 miles. Wooden steering wheel, hula girl. I mean, whoever restored this thing did a phenomenal job. Look at the seat, look at the bed. Wood, my friends, wood. Coast Classics presents the Dash. McLaren is whatever, you see that every day. This you don't see every day. I think I should get one of these. I would, but it's kind of out of my budget. I only have money for broken, neglected BMWs. But this one is kind of weathered. I wonder if it was cheap. Yeah, look at that. Not something you want to see on a McLaren. The interior, it looks pretty good. I mean, I'd pay even 3,000 for this. Nice car. So I tipped the guy nicely because he helped me and reinstalled my left lung. And now we can proceed and get familiar with this car. What did I buy? What did I get myself into? Let's start Tour de España on the front. We have four beautiful headlights and they look really good actually. A little bit cloudy on the inside, but you can see original Hella. So that'll clean up nicely. Bumper looks really good. Plastic doesn't even have any marks. So the chrome will polish nicely. The grill looks perfect. What is that? branch that's beaten up a little bit but i think that's gonna stay because character small scuff there we have a small bump here the fender looks really good as well considering the age no rust you can see here someone was hitting it with the doors and stuff and i hate this i really really hate and this is why on parking lots i park as far away as possible from another human because humans they don't care about cars not all of them this looks good, no rust here. Antenna or the eye poking device. Love that. But look at this, original run-in instructions. That is beautiful and rare. The chrome looks really good here. Rust obviously here. I believe this is a very common spot on E21 and the window needs to come out for this to repair that properly. Arch, so far looking really good. Some cracking here and this one, this was repainted as well so there was rust here and you can see it coming through now that looks really good no rust just some mud Ooh, we have bilstein shocks yellow but what do you think about these wheels they are a piece of art always gonna need new tires 185 70 13. let's have a look at the roof overall i think pretty good you can see some small rust stains here and on the sunroof lid but this is not too bad and if i'm not mistaken the old 3 series like the E30 even the 8 series the sunroof lid likes to rust like crazy but this looks repairable rear window that looks in excellent shape even the trim and everything looks great trunk lid you see how beautiful this color looks in sun just spectacular imagine all of this polished or freshly repainted tail lights this one looks good no cracks we have rust here I hate rust in here in the corner as well the bumper this one looks 
really solid. We have twin exhaust. That was really cool in the 80s and the 323i was the only 3 series that had the twin exhaust. And it looks in really, really, really good shape. That hanger is off and that one is gone. That's locked with the key that I don't have. Some surface rust here. A bit more rust here. This taillight is looking cracked. That is a crack there. So I'm gonna need rear or right taillight. This wheel arch, so far, good. But I think this is the worst bit of rust so far that we found. Cause there's actually a hole over there. So this trim here is missing. Hopefully it's somewhere in the car. Yep, I can see it over there. The side skirts look really good. No rust at all. We have some rust here coming through. In the corner, that's also not a common spot on E21. And look at this, ITV, ITV, that's Spanish German Tooth Inspection or MOT, done in 1995. And that's the last technical inspection that this car received. And that was 26 years ago, my friends, 26 years ago. That is a long, long time for a car to sit. This fender looks beautiful, no rust inside as well so let's see what we have in the trunk if it's open that is oh it is no spare that's kind of shame but this looks really good actually no signs of major rust anywhere some, some surface stuff happening there but that'll clean up oh we have rustage here so that needs to clean up why that just looks like surface rust. Clean up and treat it. Toolkit, please let there be a toolkit. Negative on that. Completely empty. So I'm gonna be looking for that. Here as well looks good. So I think this here alone is a really, really good sign that there's no major rust anywhere. So this glass, the rubber seal is missing completely. So it's just bouncing in there. Door card fixed beautiful and this door panel looks in really good shape so this is green on green green on the outside green on the inside that's the door handle really neat no way it has power mirrors <laughs> that's really neat and this here tells me that the car was sitting outside and that window was down and that's how that seat got ruined completely but I really like this, is a two-tone combination. We have fabric here and this green stuff on the side. That's really cool. And I want to keep this theme. I want to restore this car and keep its originality. So I'm going to be looking for a company or some professional that can redo all of this fabric back to original. I think that's really neat and we should try and keep it as original as possible. Some knobs here. That does something, that as well. Don't know what that is. We have a dogleg racing gearbox. Never driven a car with a gearbox like this, so that's gonna take some getting used to. The handbrake, it works, as demonstrated previously. The dash, it is, I think I saw a crack somewhere. Yeah, there it is. It's gonna be super difficult to find one that's not cracked, so maybe that's repairable, I don't know. It does not have AC which is kind of odd because this is a Spanish car. I thought most of them came with AC. The headliner looks decentish. This, very crispy. It has a sunroof. I really wish it didn't have a sunroof, but it has a manual one. Not gonna try and open that now. Clutch, I bet we don't have clutch. Of course not. No, actually, no, that's just spring. No clutch, to be expected. The door handle. What is that? That's, oh no, that's the fuel pump cover. So I was told they didn't try to start this car because if they did, they probably did more harm than good. This is the carpet, I believe, from the trunk. The door card. Ooh, I thought it's gonna be a lot worse, but that looks really decent actually. So the seat is off. There we are. I read that they like trust in here as well. That looks good. That looks good as well. And 
well it doesn't look like someone tried to remove the fuel pumps which is a big bonus maybe they were just checking if they're working which after 26 years of course they're not working we have a hole for the speakers there is that factory it must be yeah there are no speakers in the door panels so no rust on the bottom nope perfect we have a free comb another one that i believe went there so that's ruined door handle yep that's the mirror that was removed for some reason the glass that'll clean up cover for something i don't know free towel oh is that wet no it's not that's clean actually yeah but this side was definitely open because you can see a lot more crap in here than on that side which is a shame because if this window was closed the interior would probably be saved at least that's the glove box please let there be something interesting in here boring insurance stuff nothing interesting free tissues we have a sticker 93,000 kilometers in 96 93 and the next all change 98,000 kilometers so it was driven until 1996 so 25 years off the road and this is great this is a piece of history so i have to keep that i don't have entire history but i have to look at the report again let me pull it up this is the spanish report and unfortunately it doesn't say how many kilometers it had this is the history the history of inspections and it seems like it had two or three owners but 1988 then 94 94 and then 94 until now one owner so one owner since 1994 and we can call this two owner essentially usually it says kilometers here but since the car is very old they probably didn't know any of that back then and it only goes back until 91 they didn't have records prior to that but this service history leave that in there close this uh oh the door is refusing to cooperate well i'm defeated i need thinking juice which is typically beer but it's early in the morning so it's coffee come on there we are yes and now we need to check out the power plant the hood opens the old school way and this is the beating heart of this car the almighty m20 b23 engine which is an inline six cylinder 2.3 liter engine and it was a piece of art back in the day referred to as one of the smoothest inline sixes in the day 143 ps 190 newton meters of torque and zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 8.7 seconds which is really decent by today's standards but back in the day it was quick really really quick top speed of around 190 kilometers per hour it was it was the fastest three series back in the day i mean i honestly cannot wait to drive this car this here looks not very good not gonna lie and uh, i'm gonna remove a spark plug or two and use endoscope and look inside the engine so we can find out and see if this is going to be service type of rev revival or engine out and rebuild revival because if the cylinders are full, full of rust there's no point to even try to start it but if they look clean relatively clean gonna spray some fogging oil and stuff in it let it percolate and then we can just service the rest of it and see if it's going to start also gotta inspect the timing belt because this car has a timing belt yeah this is new for me i don't know thing about these engines the oldest bmw that i owned is e31 and e32 with the m70 engine so this is just complete new territory for me donde esta my lamp coolant i'd be surprised if there's anything in here yeah bone dry uh oh got spark plugs two of them here and then the one fell out so it has bosch k jet thronics thingy for the fuel system no idea how that thing works that has that giant thing here with hoses and everything. You can see the original color, BMW olive green, metallic. And this here, it actually looks decent. I don't know if you can see, but it looks clean inside, which is a good sign. This is the Bosch K Jetronic fuel system. 
I'm gonna have to do a lot of reading on that, see how it works, how to service it. All of this plastic, whatever, they're not plastic, but maybe they are. Fuel hoses need to be replaced. Where's the depth stick? There it is, so we're gonna check if there's any oil in it. That looks clean, really clean. Yeah, definitely has oil. It's nearly on the minimum, but it definitely has oil and it's clean. Doesn't smell, doesn't look like there's water in it or metal. That's torn, that's disconnected. Brake booster, oh yeah, that's missing. The brake fluid reservoir. The brake master looks completely rusted. So someone was tinkering with this car. I just, I really hope they didn't try to start this car. The guy told me they didn't touch it. They just found it and didn't touch it. But look at that. Bolts there, spark plug here. What's missing there? That's not good. There's a hole there and something is missing. Can you see it? Some connection missing here, but no rust in here. We're in the corners. There's some surface rust here, but that'll clean up. The battery tray is also rust free. Here it all looks solid. I think now we need to have a look underneath the car. I need to get my creeper. Yeah, this one looks good. And you can already tell that this is a car that lives in a warm climate. There just isn't any major rust on it so far. Ball joint actually looks good. And the strut, it's not leaking. No horrible, terrible leaks. I mean, all of this looks decent. The belt is on, that looks good. Rear main seal leak, probably. Look at this floor and the uh, side skirt. It looks great. Even the middle exhaust looks in excellent shape. This is a 40 year old car and it looks that good underneath can you see in there from what i can tell it looks really good but it looks like it lived in some sort of grass and stuff fuel filters and stuff i don't know how this the system works on this thing is that the external fuel pumps i don't know i'm gonna have to do some research but i'm really really happy so far how it looks from underneath and no leaks from the diff Another option that these cars had is LSD, limited slip differential. I think once the car is on the lift, we can read the numbers on the diff and see if it's LSD or a normal one. But given that it doesn't have sports seats or sports steering wheel, it's probably gonna be open diff. Floor on this side looks mint as well. No major rust anywhere. Nothing's gonna have to be cut and weld. And this type of condition for 40 year old car is absolutely dream i have this device this is a paint measuring device and now we're going to check how many panels on this car still wear original paint original paint should be between 110 130 microns and repainted it's going to be 170 80 or so so let's see start on the roof 112 that's original paint sunroof lid yeah 107 that's good 224 so the hood was repainted, not original paint. 100, that's original paint. 188, repainted. 112, so only the upper part was repainted. 105, original paint. 220, definitely repainted. 217, repainted. 196, repainted. 123 original 137 that's good so this arch didn't have any work done 100 this upper part was repainted 185 this bit here was repainted yeah you can see they cut it here like that and just blended it in here so i was kind of hoping that the paint on this car might be original considering the kilometers and that's been off through for like 26 years so essentially it was only used for around 15 years but we don't have many panels that still wear original paint and with that in mind the car is going to be completely repainted to original color if this was original color and the same state with some marks and a bit of rust here and there i would leave it just like that because of originality but since it was already painted and we have disgusting rust over there we need to sort that out so the coal car is going to be stripped and repainted obviously that's going to come at a very late stage of this restoration first thing as always is mechanical stuff get it running and now i'm going to remove a couple of spark plugs so we can look inside the engine and see the condition of the cylinders those spark plugs look brand new
vacuum up the dirt. Oh, two euros. Actually, that is not a brand new spark plug. That looks very, very old and very black. There's a bit of corrosion on the tip, which is not a good sign. This endoscope was a gift from a nice subscriber. Thank you very much. Now let's see what the inside of this engine looks like. All right, that's not good. There's a ton of metal in it, which I don't quite understand. Definitely some scoring and a bit of rust. I don't understand why is there, where there are so many metal shavings in there. Maybe the spark plug threads were stripped and they were doing the repair and stuff. So let's remove another spark plug and then I'll show you the pictures. Heavy, heavy carbon buildup on this one. So this one doesn't look terrible, but it's bone dry. Yeah, you can definitely see some surface rust in there. So I'm going to quickly remove all spark plugs so we can have a proper look. So four looks best so far. That one definitely has some surface corrosion. The worst one by far is cylinder number one. There's definitely some heavy scoring in there. Right. Will it run? Possibly. Probably. Will it run good? Nope. So now I'm gonna vacuum all of the cylinders, see if I can get crap from the cylinder one out. Either way, that one has a lot of scoring. The rest of them look semi-decent. So it's some surface corrosion, but again, if you spray fogging oil and WD-40 or whatever inside, they'll come around and the car will run. So this is my fully patented erectile dysfunction sucking device. There we are. So I got most of the crap out. There's some tiny shavings still in there, but that's fine because all of that will fly out, out of the exhaust wall once the car is running. And also the cylinder is ruined anyway. Cause... So the rain is cramping my style, but I want to spray WD-40 into the cylinders. That's going to help the rust, well, surface rust. And then <sighs> fogging oil for men. That's going to lubricate the cylinders properly for the first start. I mean, we are far, far away from the first start. I'm not going even to attempt to do it now because the, before I even turn the engine over, I want to check the timing belt, see the condition of it, because if that snaps, then we are risking doing some proper damage to the engine. This is cylinder number one. You can see some scoring over there and surface rust. But that's a ton of metal shavings. Not sure where they came from when the spark plug was undone or something. But you can see some heavy scoring here, heavy, heavy scoring. Surface rust. Then you can see some proper carbon buildup on cylinder number two. This is three. Surface rust. Again, some metal shavings and stuff. Surface rust. Surface rust. And then this is cylinder number one after vacuuming. So I removed most of the metal shavings. So will this car run with the state of the cylinders like this? Definitely. Will it run good? No, not really, especially cylinder number one. But we're still going to check the compression once we get the car running. First WD-40. And now fogging oil from men. So this stuff is really good because it's going to miss the entire cylinder. There we are. All cylinders fogged. Spark plugs reinstalled as well as the ignition cables. And now the car can sit with oil and WD-40 working its thing inside. And when the time comes for us to start working on this car, we'll do further inspection and stuff. We're going to remove the valve cover. Got to check the timing belt. And I think this is not ideal, but after 25 years or so sitting, it's pretty much what you would expect. Uh, cylinder one is really bad. The rest of them, not too bad, but we'll see. Maybe it comes back around once the car is running and the piston rings can scrape all of that crap out. And if the compression is low, there's no way around it. The engine needs a complete rebuild. Shocks seem decent. This is as good as you can get for a 40 year old car, rust wise and condition wise, especially when you find one that's been sitting for a very long time. If you find one of these cars in Germany or any other country where the winters are harsh and there's a lot of salt, it's just going to be a complete rust bucket. So this for me is perfect. I hate rust and whatever rust is on the body that can be easily removed by a body shop, someone who knows what they're doing. These cars are super, super rare and don't even ask me. I'm not gonna answer. I'm not selling this car.
this one is mine and I'm gonna do whatever I can to keep it as long as I can. Obviously this is going to be a huge learning curve for me because I don't know anything about E21 or these old inline six engines. So any help that you wanna provide me with, please do. I'll appreciate that. There's probably gonna be a lot of rare parts that I'm going to need to source, but from the looks of it, it's complete. The toolkit is missing. I'll need that, need the rear right tail light. I'm also probably going to replace the steering wheel. I kind of like the look of the three spoke, M is it M Sport? Whatever, it's not. The three spoke sport steering wheel. It's very expensive, but if you have one for sale, drop me a message, I really like that one. And other than that, I wouldn't change anything in the interior. Also the smell of the car, it's actually quite pleasant. It smells like an old car. It doesn't smell in mold or anything like that. I like it. Also, this car doesn't have any cats. Headers, middle exhaust, rear exhaust, that's it, nothing else. So that straight six engine, it's going to sound beautiful and I can't wait for it. I can't stop smiling, I really can't. I've been sipping my coffee and staring at it for a good 20 minutes now and I still cannot believe that I owned a legend, a proper BMW classic, E21 323i. And if you offer me one in mint condition and this one, I would take this one in a heartbeat because this car is a survivor and now I can make it my own touch everything, make it drive beautifully, make it look beautifully and properly enjoy this car. And I'm so glad it's in this color, olive green and not one of those gray, black, boring colors. This is really 80s color, proper retro color. And once it's fully repainted, it's just going to pop. But in the meantime, we can polish it and still make it pop. I've got updates. I found a locksmith in Frankfurt who told me he can make me a key if I bring in the cylinder lock. So I removed the lock from the trunk. That was the easiest one to remove. And a couple of days later, I'm holding a key. And it actually works. Easy enough. The only thing is this key, at least for the trunk, it's not the same as the one for the doors. And it says it's missing a couple of notches or feet here. So I need to remove the door lock, take that to him, and then he's gonna make me a proper key. This one works for the, for the trunk, but it says it's probably not gonna work for the door and for the ignition. But in any case, this is excellent news because this was only 26 euros and I'm gonna have brand new keys and I'm not gonna have to change all of the locks and cylinders, which is really huge. I really didn't feel like doing all of that because I already tried to source replacement locks and it's proving to be very, very difficult. Nonetheless, so let's try it. It works. It works. I locked it. Unlocked, locked. Brilliant. Let's try the ignition. Yeah, for the ignition, no dice. It is not working. It goes in, but I cannot turn it. So I'm gonna have to remove the door lock because on the door lock, there's a code on the bottom and then based on that, he can make me the key that's gonna work in the ignition as well. I've got an update on the previous update. I went back to the locksmith with the passenger side door lock and there's a key code on it and he was able to cut me a key well to adjust the old one because he was missing a couple of notches and stuff here. So this one should work in the ignition lock. Let's verify it's still working in the door. That it is. Moment of truth. Yes, it's working. <laughs> It's unlocked. Brilliant. Come on. Come on, you worked before. Now it's a no-go again. I have another one. Let's try that one. Does he cut me two of them? Oh yeah, this one works much better. Pfft. I have two of them now. Ah, oh, this is... Think, baby Jesus. So I can reconnect the steering column and then we can finally steer the car. But it's such a relief. It goes in. Super nicely. Bob's your uncle. So this turned out to be a lot less complicated than I was anticipating, but it makes sense because when you think about it, this is just a normal key. There's no immobilizer, alarm or anything like that. It's just like a house. He, so any locksmith can do it. If they have a code, it's even easier because he cut this key just based on the code that I gave him. So that is spot on. And with that, the key saga is over. We're gonna park it here. Well, not exactly here, over there. But let me know, are you as excited as I am about this project? 
it is a really, really cool find. In the next episode, we'll start working on it, try to get it running after 25 years of sitting. It'll be challenging, but doable. The next video is going to be on the E60 M5. I really want to finish that project and finally drive it. Then I want to start working on Project Karzur, E32 750IL again. But currently, I have a bit of an issue with space as in I don't have any and in a few weeks I'll be traveling to Sweden to get that M car that I mentioned in the previous episode that's right another project and you're gonna love that one too trust me so I'm running around trying to find space where I can work comfortably on cars because main issue now is I only have one lift so once I put one car on that lift that is the only car that I can work on for the next few days a couple of weeks and if I have two or three lifts then I can work on more projects simultaneously I have a couple of leads, so we'll see if anything pans out. For now, that should do it. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video. Check out the merchandise. We have some really cool stuff. And also my Patreon account, should you want to help and support a dingy classic project such as this one. Adios, amigos. Where am I going? Now, here.